everybody and a very happy Earth Hour to all of you joining us today uh, on this journey uh, that young people are taking to live in harmony with nature. We are having critical conversations under the tree of life. My name is Shweta and together with my co-host Priska uh, from the Global Youth Biodiversity Network, we are hosting uh, the first of many conversations with key personalities from different sectors and parts of the globe to talk to you about what makes, uh, what makes youth priorities, uh, you know, uh, how, how we can make youth priorities and our vision uh, for, the, for nature a reality. Uh, for the first uh, conversation, uh, we want to inspire all of you with the experience of a true lover uh, for nature and uh, sustainability. Uh, welcome, Michael Wood. Uh, Malcolm is an adventure athlete, a social entrepreneur, a passionate environmental filmmaker. Uh, he's uh, recognized as the UN Environment uh, Program Mountain Hero, and he's also a successful uh, restorer. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining the youth today for an exciting uh, conversation uh, under the tree of life. You and we'll be talking to an amazing uh, musician, uh, Rocky Dawoni, uh, from Ghana. Uh, Rocky is a Grammy-nominated musician and UN Goodwill um, Ambassador. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rocky, for joining uh, the youth uh, today uh, for another exciting uh, conversation under the tree of life. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's exciting. And then also even what is even more exciting is that um, I travel to the northern part of Ghana where uh, I come from. Uh, traditionally, my older brother is the chief there. And uh, through my foundation, we have been very uh, focused there actually on trying to inspire a lot of young people to, um, you know, to change their consciousness when it comes to the environment. Because we've seen that eroding over time. And that has found its way into the current group of uh, leadership that we have, where, you know, issues that are to be uh, focused on the environment, although there's a lot of lip service paid to it, but there's not a, a lot that happens on the ground. And when it comes to people's responsibility too, we see that there's so many things that need to be done in that space in order to bring people back, to let people understand that, you know, living in harmony with nature will be the way forward. So. Um, in the next few days, you know, after the events that I'm doing here, I'm also going to be engaging, uh, you know, some of the schools to have conversations on this same topic. So, in a gist, I'm just very glad that we are all meeting right now under the tree of life, coming to you right from Northern Ghana. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Rocky. And yes, for all the people watching us, do stay on till the end of the interview because Rocky has some exciting uh, music that he's going to share with us. He's going to... Uh, it's Trump has, uh, you know, sing a little bit of one of the, the most recent uh, song that he's just launched on Beautiful People. So do stay on till the end of the interview to hear him give us an exclusive on that as well. So Malcolm, uh, our first question today is something we're quite in inquisitive about. Uh, you as a person who's experienced so many adventures and, ha and have has have surrounded with nature and have been in nature for such a long time, we wanted to hear from you. Uh, act, actually, what gives you butterflies when you think of nature? Well, I've said I, I, I'm enjoying the waterfall behind you. That's uh, that's <laughs> definitely uh, that's definitely one of my elements. I do like water. Um, for for me, it's got to be a freshly snow-covered mountain, um, and getting to have a bird's eye view of it, flying mm -hmm. over in a paraglider, which is um, you know a form of free flight, and just getting to look at this blank canvas it looks like a brand new start that always gives me butterflies wow that photo looks amazing <laughs> awesome and we're also going to share um, a photo of malcolm uh, in nature and we'd like you to just give a little bit of uh, an explanation um, about that photo yeah the the photo is uh, actually me uh, flying over uh, the boisson glacier on mont blanc mm -hmm. which is the highest mountain in uh, europe and i'm using a paraglider um, and it was on a day which was particularly hot, um, which was actually due to uh, climate change. Um, but on that specific day, the thermals were strong enough to bring the paragliders all above 4,000 meters. And we had this spectacular free flight um, where we all got really high and we could see the Mont Blanc Massif uh, in all its glory. And I did this amazing flight um, 
over the glaciers that were hanging off the Mont Blanc. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, just just an incredible day, an incredible memory, and an, a great perspective of nature. My music, uh, whenever I'm, I'm I'm making whenever I'm making music, I try to uh, draw inspiration from different aspects. You know, as a musician, when I walk through nature, I hear songs. You know, they're the way the waterfall falls into the water, the, the song of the birds, the swaying of the trees, that's melody to me, you know? And all of it, for me, is like we're part of this magnificence, and this magnificence is part of us. And I feel it's like the greatest miracle of life, recognizing that we are part of this incredible, uh, you know, expanse, and uh, we need to, honor that uniqueness and preserve it so that it can continue to serve us. And that means finding ways to live in harmony. Given the state uh, of the world uh, today, uh, can you share with us what frustrates you the most about uh, our social and ecological crisis? Yeah, I think uh, what frustrates me the most is, I guess, a loss of intimacy and revenance uh, for mm. nature. Yeah. Um, the problem with urbanization with the youth today is that there's a disconnect to the importance of nature, what it means, how it affects the environment, how it affects our life support systems, such as our food chain, our water supply. Um, and, you know, I've already spent kind of the last years of my life uh, using film as a medium to bring nature back into people's homes. Um, and to show them why it's important, to show them why we get excited by it. You know, you watch Red Bull athletes coming off a mountain, but you don't understand that they have this deep connection to it. You just think it looks fun. Um, that there's, there's more to nature um, than it just looking fun. It's actually the environment that we have to sustain life on. And, and it's really that disconnect that frustrates me. Um, and I think it should be part of educational syllabuses. I think there should be more outward bound schemes i think parents should be encouraged to take holidays and trips to the countryside especially if their kids are growing up in, in inner cities um and and with that appreciation we will see the damage that we're doing to nature firsthand we'll see the extent at which it's changing year on year um and you don't you don't get that you don't get scared about that when you're sheltered in in, in your home in the city Further, I wanted to just remind our viewers that they should stay tuned till the end of this interview because we will all be enchanted by Rocky playing one of his amazing songs. So do stay on. Uh, now, uh, what I wanted to ask you next is related to uh, something which is one of the core problems that we see in the world. It is now clearer than ever that even with the IBES report stating it, that the relationship between the ecological and the climate crisis is actually linked with the underlying inequality that has shaped our economy and society today. And thus, having equality and equity for people and nature is actually one of the 12 uh, priorities that we have in our manifesto. My question to you is, do you think equity and inclusion are needed to ensure our future in harmony with nature? What is your take about equity and with respect to even human rights? And do we really need inequality, uh, equity and inclusion to be a core part of uh, a change that is needed in the world so that we can live in harmony with nature? Yes, I mean, the only way forward for humanity is for us to now start to implement and include um, uh, a much more bigger idea of inclusion and being able to recognize that until we are able to show up and, uh, you know, support and create uh, equality and even out this inequality uh, by empowering uh, also uh, dispossessed uh, communities, dispossessed indigenous communities, uh, and and having them also partake in the prosperity that comes from uh, this vision of uh, sustainability and renewing the world. We are going to go in circles and come back to start all over again. So a model that will include everybody and also empower uh, the poor 
and needy and dispossessed will be the only way and the only sustainable way that the world can move forward. Uh, youth have come together to create a manifesto with 12 unprecedented actions that we want world leaders to take. And one of the key actions we want them to take is called transformative change. And what we mean by that and what has been stated by the IBES Global Assessment Report is that we need a system-wide reorganization across our technology, our economy, and even our social factors uh, where we, we need to even change our values and behaviors. And what it means for nature is that we need to tackle the direct, indirect drivers and the values and behaviors that underpin all, this, all these uh, factors to actually be tackled together. Now, having such a big change that we as young people are pushing for, we wanted to know uh, how, what it means in the food industry, especially because food is such an integral component of how and why humans connect with nature. Uh, and food is such an important part of everybody's life. The way, and if we change things there, it can be significant because especially in the way we consume and produce, if we can change that, it can really be a transformative change and help us live in harmony with nature. So my question to you, Malcolm, is what is your vision or what kind of changes you think uh, you can see happen in the food industry that can be transformational so that we can actually have a fair, and sus uh, fair equitable and sustainable way of life? I mean, it, it's such a big topic. Um, I, could, I could talk about this for hours. Um, I mean, I think, I think what you just said is extremely important. Small incremental changes are not enough. And that we're in a moment in time where we need everyone to come together and make a massive change. And it's quite a scary thing to, to, to look at it. You know, you, you, you look at yourself as an individual, how can I make an impact? I'm just one of 7 billion people that are on this planet. Does it really make a difference if I cut meat out of my diet and go, you know, um, just for a plant-based diet? And I think, you know, if you asked me four years, was I optimistic that we could do this change? My answer would have been no. You know, that 50% of North America didn't even believe in climate change four years ago. So that number has drastically changed today. And I think um, there's no excuse if you're a business owner, if you're a politician, if you're an individual to make a change in what you're doing. You know, so as a business owner, when I discovered um, through our, our film, A Plastic Ocean, the extent of the damage of plastic pollutions in the sea and how it was affecting human um, health in the food chain, there was no way I could not act as a business owner. Um, having that information and having that financial ability, I had to take action. If you have those two things, you, you should be taking action today. And I think it's all about education. So you, if, we can get, if we can get corporations to make the change and we can get the big industry and policymakers to, to make the change and the individuals, there's three different things that need to happen at the same time. And I think the information is there. The awareness is there now. And so now it really is time for the change. Um, in terms of the food industry, I, you know, it, it is important to move to a primary um, plant-based diet. It doesn't mean you need to cut out meat entirely from your diet. You know, if, 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 if it's really difficult for you to, to do that, diet is a very tricky thing. People don't like being told what to, what to eat. But if you just reduced it five days out of a week, just by, by cutting out meat, I think once a week, it was, it was a huge number. Um, the, th there's, there's loads of new technologies as well that you can invest in. Aqua, um, aqua farming is a huge one. Um, there, there's, there's, a, there's a fact that if we, we could feed um, the planet with, this, with, with an aqua farm the size of Manhattan Island, um, just because it's the most efficient form of farming anywhere in the world. And it sequesters nitrogen and carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Um, and, and so we've got to start investing in these kinds of technologies and we've got to move away from mass farming. We've got to be smart with our choices in the, um, as individuals and as well as uh, corporations. I felt like over the last four years, the corporations have had to take the lead the individuals have had to take the lead and it really is time for the politicians to wake up and, 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 and listen to the youth of today because we've, we've got to sort out the problem. Wow, that was the, the most beautiful way I could have heard anybody explain the concept and the answer. And 
wow, some of the, techni the, the techniques you mentioned with aqu aquaculture, I, I did not hear about that. So it's really interesting to see the connections. And you are right, like if you're seeing that the world and everybody in different sectors, including the private sector is taking action, then what's stopping the world leaders to take action as well? So uh, thank you so much, Malcolm, for joining us today and inspiring our community. Uh, it's been really a pleasure to hear from you and hear about how you can, uh, the way you are envisioning things for the for transformative change to even happen in uh, your your sector. And uh, definitely, I would ask the, uh, ask the viewers to def start following Malcolm on social media as well to see all the amazing sustainable things he's doing. Uh, along with the cool mountaineering photos he has, which are really cool, by the way, Malcolm. Uh, yeah, and I would like to also uh, ask all of you uh, to not to forget that, you know, youth are coming together. Uh, as Malcolm said, we are getting powerful and we need your help. We are calling for unprecedented action and we want the whole of society to transformatively change and so that we all can live in harmony with nature. Thank you so much, uh, Rocky. And speaking of giving young people the right tools, um, can you please uh, maybe sing just a little bit about um, uh, the, your latest song, uh, Beautiful People, just so we can inspire the- I, mean, I would like to play the video uh, with, you know, with you guys. So I would like to give you the opportunity to use the video for, but you know, I'm sitting right here in a hotel in Northern Ghana and I can sing a few lines because I believe that in the long run, we, we have a shared destiny as part of the human family. And an action in one part of the world, you know, impacts another part of the world. So that means that we have to now think globally and act locally. And we have to also see the importance and power that we are a network of hearts and souls and visions. So we have to draw the net wider enough to connect people, connect voices, inspire each other, because there's no problem or issue that is bigger than our will to succeed and overcome. So I think that that, that, you know, that energy alone, if you are able to nurture it around the world, it will be the greatest catalyst for change because there's, there's nothing greater than a people determined to succeed. And this song, Beautiful People, is honoring everybody, honoring the beauty in all of us, honoring the beauty in nature, honor, honoring the beauty that connects all of us as a human family and the beauty that also connects us to nature and the beauty too and inspiration that will be what will inspire us to move forward so that all our problems that we're facing will actually become stepping stones towards victory. So this song is called Beautiful People. I dedicate this song to you, my beautiful people. My beautiful people, come and sing along, yeah, yeah. I dedicate this song to you, my beautiful people. Oh, beautiful people, come and sing along, yeah, you know. There are many things we cannot hide. There are many bonds that can be undone. Just like our bond, yeah. Everything in life is a sacrifice, but I know it was worth the price, for I did it for you. I dedicate this song to you, oh beautiful people. Oh beautiful people. Come and sing along, yeah, I say. Here I come as a song, oh beautiful people. My beautiful people, come and sing along, yeah. Woohoo, that Thank was beautiful. <laughs> That's so beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We really loved it. And it was truly inspirational, uh, especially how you explained to us the meaning of the song in the beginning. I think I have goosebumps for sure. So thank you for that. Hello, my name is Rocky Dawuni. We live in an important time, a time when every voice on earth 
is advocating for all of us, taking our responsibility when it comes to the environment, when it comes to biodiversity, and also when it comes to nature. Young people around the world are rising up and they're not sitting for others to take control of this. They are organizing and calling and advocating and inciting and inspiring all of us to take action. Through the Youth Manifesto, there is a document right now that defines this vision. And the vision is not only for the youth, the vision is for humanity, but it's about the voice of the youth playing a role and contributing to this. So my appeal is to everybody, every person that is part of this family of humanity, this brotherhood and sisterhood of humanity, to know that at this crossroads, it will take all of us and this manifesto is also uh, a bold document that is appealing to leaders to act. So it's your responsibility to sign, join, share, appeal to leaders, all of us. Let's all jump behind and amplify this voice so that eventually when we are able to reach that mountain top, we will know that it didn't take one voice, but it took collective action for us to reach there. Thank you very much. Wow. So thank you so, so much, uh, Rocky, for joining us today and ins really inspiring our community uh, to, you know, feel this change, feel the beauty around and also, you know, inspiring us to take action. Uh, I think this is what we needed. Youth, are, you, youth have come together across the world to demand for action and with your inspiration and your support we really want to push for real transformative change in the whole of society and i think music can be an amazing powerful tool to do that and uh, you know we want to as as you've said many times we want to reach this vision of living in harmony with nature and you know we need help from amazing people like you to join us and we would also like to ask everybody this Earth Hour to definitely sign the Youth Manifesto that is linked in the description below so that you can actually help us, you know, really push our world leaders, our elected leaders to act fairly, sustainably and equi equitably now. And, you know, join us, join Rocky and the rest of the youth to, you know, take action. Thank you so much. song to you my beautiful people my beautiful people come and sing along yeah here i got a song for you my beautiful people my beautiful people come and sing along yeah there are many things we cannot hide there are many bonds that can be undone just like our bond, yeah. Everything in life is a sacrifice, but I know it was worth the price, for I did it for you. Here I come with a song, oh beautiful people, oh beautiful people, 
What do you think when you hear the word pandemic? Masks, social distancing, Zoom, hospitals, scientists, lockdowns, families separated and devastated. The effects of the pandemic are easy to see, but what about the causes? No, not them, the real causes and drivers. Do you think of us and our broken relationship with nature? Deforestation over exploitation, clearing the land for agriculture and livestock, overproduction over consumption, illegal consumption, our long list of unsustainable actions. When we destroy nature and take over natural habitats, we break the healthy balance and boundaries of the natural world, forcing wildlife into closer contact with each other, our livestock and people. And all this makes it easier for diseases to spread between animals and to us. When and how we will emerge from COVID-19 isn't clear, but one thing is the risk of future pandemics will only increase unless we fix our broken relationship with nature. So where do we go from here? The pandemic has shown us that we have it in us to make a change. We've mastered social distancing. Now, let's distance ourselves from the things that destroy our planet. We've learned that a little effort goes a long way. Now let's continue to do the little things to make the biggest difference. We've realized the importance of being outdoors. So let's protect the natural habitat that gives us so much. We've learned just how much of a difference a few degrees can make. Now let's face the climate emergency and keep our planet's temperature in check. We've seen that we can adapt to new ways of working. Let's now explore new ways of living that put people and planet first. It's clear that we can work together towards a common goal. Now let's make that goal the protection of our planet. Take the first step by sharing this video and put the spotlight on 